tuning into Liberty Under Attack Radio, your home for libertarianism in action. We provide you with real free market solutions using the freedom umbrella of direct action to give you the tools necessary to increase your own personal liberty. As Ludwig von Mises said, liberty is always freedom from the government. And now your host, Shane. And good evening and welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio here on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. That is fprnradio.com. We apologize for uh, for the late start. Um, definitely, definitely apologize for the late start. And also, it uh, looks like the plans are going to change for this broadcast. Uh, I guess it's uh, probably a bad day for a show, but uh, we're going to go on with it and uh, and do it anyways. Uh, and we'll get to more uh, with that on that uh, change of plans uh, momentarily. Today is March 27th, 2016. I'm your host, Shane, broadcasting live from the communist state of Illinois. The website is libertyunderattack.com. With me uh, is my co-host, Danny. Uh, Stan will not be with us uh, this evening, or at least uh, for the start of the show. Uh, so, so, so uh, Danny, uh, good evening. How are you doing this evening? How are you doing? I'm not doing too bad. I, uh, As you may have known, I got kicked off Facebook for a week uh, last Sunday right after our show. Uh, I apparently called it. I apparently got reported by a tranny for calling people who like sucking dick a faggot. And um, so I haven't been able to post all week, which has been really frustrating because there's been a number of things I wanted to post about. Um, on top of that, while I was uh, banned from Facebook, I decided to take a little trip to uh, Brussels. Um Got to see the airport and metro, and I, I had a, a real blast out there. Oh, yeah? And, yeah. <laughs> uh, other yeah. than that, um, I don't know. i, I just been kind of keeping myself uh, away from the Facebook. I will say I've probably dedicated a bit more time towards masturbation than uh, I should <laughs> have this week. But uh, here I am. I'm happy to be here for the uh, the show. <laughs> Uh, I was going to troll Amanda and Cheryl just a bit, so when we see you guys, I'm going to hit you hard. But, uh, yeah, here I am. Very good, very good. Uh, and, uh, Danny, we also went to uh, Chicago last weekend uh, for the uh, Chicago Voluntarists and Libertarians meetup. Uh, so, yeah, I got a, some got a chance to chill with uh, some folks from Michigan, Danny included. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely a good time. Uh, definitely a good time. Spent way too much money, though. Well, I gotta say, uh, Chicago is uh, a lot of fun, honestly. Uh, besides the fact that we destroyed your little uh, uh, machine. Oh yeah, then yeah, the, yeah. I had a uh, uh, that's that was actually the reason for the can the cancellation for the show yesterday. I kind of felt like I felt like shit. My insulin pump quit. I don't know. I don't know how long it was actually like off for. So yeah, I got home on Sunday, and yeah, I, I was in bed. Uh, feeling like shit by by this time on last Sunday. So yeah, the show is definitely not possible. <laughs> well, um, I gotta say though, going out with you to a nightclub, uh, seeing those girls with the the cute girls in Chicago with the giant racks. Oh yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I honestly think next month I'm gonna try and make another attempt to go out there, uh, really for no reason other than just to go to the nightclubs, but yeah. maybe. We can meet up with the other voluntarists out there, which was a real blast. You know, they uh, they were warm and welcoming. Uh, I don't know. I, I, it was a pretty good time overall, besides the fact that five, yeah, five men had to sleep in the same room. Yeah, uh, that, and then also the also the <laughs> Uber driver, the fucking Uber driver, got pulled over by Chicago police. That was that was uh, really really shitty and I, if, if uh, actually yeah that should actually be like near the top of like danny's uh, profile page since he hasn't been able to post uh definitely go check out uh, his post on his personal page in regards to that situation it was uh, very uh very well said and i uh and i definitely agree and yeah uber too that was the first time i've ever used uber and it's a pretty uh pretty neat thing although it is still I, i'm not a big fan that you have to connect uh you have to pay taxes and such it's not it's not a gray market it's just kind of a it's kind of, uh, I guess it's maybe legal opportunism. Well, um, from what I understand is that Uber, uh, and we'll get you know to the rest of the episode very quickly here, uh, Uber operates kind of within a gray market. There's a lot of um, state monopolies known as a taxi system uh, who are 
challenging the courts and saying Uber is illegal. Uh, Uber doesn't meet requirements uh, of a taxi service. Uh, they should be held to the law as a taxi service. There's a lot of very, very interesting things about Uber that's going on in terms of like they're uh, challenging the monopoly of the taxi system. Mm -hmm. um, and for those uh, who aren't aware of my post, I was only writing an, um, kind of an empathetic post to the Uber driver. Uh, he got pulled over. It was kind of sad to see him get pulled over because there's all types of implications, none of which we know of, but we can speculate of. Uh, and it really did remind me of the fact that the state and most people uh, kind of sit there and see the state in a very apathetic way in which, well, they did something wrong, so they must be uh, punished. But honestly, the kid was just trying to make a few bucks. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, there was no victim. It was uh, it was just uh, pure extortion, as I've... As uh, we've all encountered in our lives, I'm sure. And if you haven't, then uh, then you're uh, definitely extremely lucky. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and uh, and move forward here. The number to call is 218-895-3818 or on Skype at FPRN Radio Live. Uh, if you have a question for us or uh, just want to join in the conversation, please do give us a call. We'll also be watching the chat available at FPRNRadio.com, so feel free to pose your questions there as well. And it looks like uh, Dave there is in chat. Uh, good evening, Dave. Hope all is well. <clears throat> And uh, I'd like to mention uh, one other thing before we uh, move forward to uh, the topic of this uh, this first uh, uh, first hour. Uh, I have uh, actually now I have uh, 22 LUA volunteers koozies for sale. You can see right here. I don't know if you can see well. It's better if you go to the website. Uh, but uh, um, and as you can see, uh, Gallery did another uh, did a fine job, and sent, they actually sent me an extra six. They they like to since I'm not ordering in mass amounts. And uh, they they still make quite a bit of money off the actual printing and shipping. They usually send me extra shit, so I definitely uh, appreciate that. Um, so with their uh, with their extras, actually able to bump down the price some. Uh, you can get one for five dollars or two for eight dollars uh, with two two dollars shipping added uh, onto the order. If you want to purchase one or two, just go to paypal.me forward slash LUA radio and give me your name, address, and the number you would like to purchase, and I'll get them sent out. Uh, again, for one, the total would be seven dollars. Uh, for two, it would be ten dollars. Uh, for additional quantities, I'm not really expecting that. Just shoot me an email, Shane at LibertyAnderAttack.com, and we'll uh, we'll definitely uh, discuss. So with that said, let's get on with it. Tonight's broadcast will be the 10th edition of the Direct Action series. Unlike the uh, political means, which requires subjugation before those who claim to be our rulers, the economic means provides you with the ability to take the initiative yourself in creating the freedom you so desire in your life. Tonight we'll be discussing a couple of subjects. Uh, in hour one, we'll play part one of two of Kyle Reardon's interview with Gary Hunt on unbanking, a subject that I am very, very interested in. Uh, I've been kind of making steps towards that uh, here in the last uh, six months or so, but it is uh, once you're in the banking system, it's really, really, really hard to get out, even for someone like me that doesn't have a lot of like uh, stocks and investments and things like that. So uh, that's what we'll be doing in this first hour. Uh, the other item on the food that we'll be examining is the Vacate the State Manifesto, which will take place in the final segments. In the third segment, uh, unrelated to the food, uh, we'll do a fascist book and take a look at the financial markets uh, with Danny and discuss the dangers of ignoring reason. And the final segment, we'll also give you a sneak peek of a book I am transcribing titled Vanu, The Search for Personal Freedom with Whatever Time is Remaining. I'm highly fascinated with that book, and I think you guys, you guys will uh, understand why uh, whenever we play that, uh, play that clip. Uh, so um, just uh, for, the, for the listeners, information and also for uh, Mr. Producer, uh, when we queue up this first clip, we will be skipping the first uh, break, and it will play through until the uh, second break. And, uh, yeah, with that said, this podcast aired on, op uh, on the Outpost of Freedom Radio on April 1st, 2013. Kyle Reardon is the interviewer, and Gary Hunt is the interviewee. Mr. Brady's queue up clip one. This broadcast of OPF Radio on April 1st of 2013 asks the question, I don't bank. Can you do it too? Gary Hunt is the guest, and your host is Sleepy Salsa.
And that was Ashley Alicize's A Dangerous Situation. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to Outpost of Freedom Radio. It is taken as a given by most Americans that nearly all commercial activity necessarily revolves around the use of a bank account. Despite general concerns about financial privacy, as well as legal statutes that effectively turn bank employees into de facto government informants, political dissidents commonly either recommend people should switch from having an account with a national bank to one with a regional bank or credit union, or they completely ignore this topic altogether. If Tea Party and Occupy Wall Street activists are both truly incredulous about the government's excuses regarding the malfeasance of high finance in recent years, is it not about time to at least consider a more consistent approach in successfully dealing with this particular area of the corptocracy? With that said, let us turn to our guest. Gary, are you with us? Yes, I am sleepy, and how are you this evening? I'm doing quite well, and I have to say, this has been this has been an episode a long time coming, so let's go ahead and get straight into it. <laughs> Gary, what is a bank? Well, I guess probably back in my IRS-only days, back in the 80s, I w it was explained to me that a, the term bank came from uh, Jewish merchants on the riverbank who dug a hole in the bank and guarded it and stored money for people while they were traveling and, and loaned that money out and made interest on it. Um, and that's an old wives' tale, basically. Um, the word bank has Saxon, Danish, uh, Italian, uh, Spanish, French, and Swedish background. Um, it means... A, a bank or a bench or, or are radically the same word. The sense is that which is set, laid, or extended. Applied to a mass of earth, it is a collection that which is thrown or laid together, a mound, a pile, a ridge. So there's probably some credence to that, but it need not be on the lake shore. that if I dug into the side of a steep hill, uh, it would be easy to protect something before safes and things like that, digging in and then guarding the front. If somebody tried to get in, they'd be digging, they'd be exposed. But apparently it does have a background along that line uh, where uh, a cave of some sort was the, the means of security. Um, over the years, it's obviously broadened its, its conception, and it continues to broaden uh, with use of derivatives and things like that, but we can get into that in a little while. But it is a, a, a initially it was a store a storage of your wealth, and then they would turn around and loan that money back out. Um, for some reason, it appears that the Muslims have managed to do it without charging interest. I don't know how the, they cover the fees, uh, but when I was young, the interest was quite low. It wasn't the double-digit numbers we're used to nowadays. Uh, but that's what a bank is: is a place to store your wealth. Well, isn't a bank then just a securable storehouse for your liquid wealth? Well, I don't like the term liquid in there, but uh, <laughs> I guess it's appropriate as far as being fluid and being able to uh, access it pretty readily, but a CD is tied up for six months or a year, and there are different in this creative age of banks, there are many types of instruments that...